us so much for letting me come to your third grade class at Tarbuk Vitora today. My name is Stacia, and I am the co-author of the Blast to the Past children's chapter books. The books are about four kids who time travel and meet famous people in American history. Who is that on the cover? Lincoln. Say loud. Lincoln. Lincoln. That's Abraham Lincoln, right. And in this story, the kids have to go back in time and find Abraham Lincoln and convince him not to give up. In the story, he's going to quit. He's not going to issue the Emancipation Proclamation and free the slaves. So the kids have an important job to make sure that history stays on track. Let me ask you an important question. What does fact mean? Who knows what fact means? True. Something that's true. Good. What does fiction mean then? What does fiction mean? Something that's not true. Something that's not true. What else does fiction mean? What else? Um, um, it's like made up. Something that's made up. Good. Okay, so fact is something that's true, and fiction is something that's not true or is made up. So we're going to play a game, and it's called Fact and Fiction Detectives. So I need you to put on your Fact and Fiction Detective hats. They're fiction. You just put them there. All right. So we're going to play Fact and Fiction Detectives. And the way this game works is I'm going to read you a little bit from Lincoln's Legacy, Blast to the Past, Lincoln's Legacy. And I want you to listen really hard. And I want you to figure out which parts of the story are fact and which parts of the story are fiction. And when I'm done reading, I'm going to say, oh, my fact and fiction detectives, help me out. Which parts are fact and which parts are fiction? Is everybody ready to play? Yeah. Yeah? Do you have a question? Yeah. Um, last year we read this game. You did? I am so glad. So you should be excellent at this game. OK? You ready? All right. So here's where the story is. The kids time travel back to 1862, and they are looking for President Lincoln. But so far, they can't find him anywhere. They're looking all over. And Abigail's telling the story, and she's, they find a newspaper boy standing on the corner, and he's selling newspapers. So they decide that they're going to go ask the newspaper boy. Do you want to buy a newspaper, the boy asked. I have some great headlines. You can have one that says, the mole-eyed monster is unfit to lead, or the original baboon must resign. Which one do you want? I already read the article about the mole-eyed monster, Bo said, shaking his head. It wasn't very nice. But suddenly I understood. And by the look in Zach's eyes, he got it too. There was only one Abraham Lincoln, and the newspapers were making fun of him. Some said he was too tall and had really long arms. Other papers said he looked like a monster because he was skinny and had a big nose. But no matter how they said it, all the newspaper headlines had the same message. Abraham Lincoln should quit. We had to find him quickly. Which way to the White House, I asked the newspaper boy. Never heard of it, the boy answered. How could he never have heard of the White House? We were standing on Pennsylvania Avenue. I asked the same question a different way. We are looking for the big house with the Oval Office and the Rose Garden. It's surrounded by a big fence and protected by Secret Service agents. Never heard of it, the boy repeated, and he turned away to sell a soldier a newspaper. Bo scratched his chin. He was thinking really hard. None of those things existed in 1862. President Taft built the Oval Office in 1909. Woodrow Wilson's wife, Ellen, planted the Rose Garden in 1913. And Abraham Lincoln himself created the Secret Service in 1865. Wow, I said to Bo, how do you know all that? I was amazed at how much he already knew about President Lincoln and the White House. I like to read, Bo shrugged. I read a lot. Good thing we brought you along, Jacob laughed. Good thing I'm clumsy, Bo smiled, remembering how he tripped and fell into the time travel hole. I was starting to like Bo. He was talking a little more now that we were getting to know each other better. Maybe we could be friends after all. So if it isn't called the White House, I asked, how are we going to find it? Too easy, Jacob winked. What does every White House have in common? I thought about it a second. So did Zach and Bo. <laughs> Presidents, we all shouted at the same time. I turned back to the newspaper boy. Where does President Lincoln live? The president's palace, the boy answered, but he calls it the executive mansion. He grabbed a newspaper off a pile. Are you going to buy a paper or not? He shook the paper in my face. I blinked hard. We needed a president, not a paper. 
One last question and we would go away. Where is the president's palace? I asked him. Your eyes ain't worth a goober. The boy pointed straight ahead and up a hill. All right, my fact and fiction detectives, I need some help. Who knows a fact or a fiction from that part of the story? I know that um, the car or the newspapers uh -huh. um, the headlines were fiction. That is the hardest one. You are starting us off with the hardest one in the whole thing. How many of you think that those headlines, the mole-eyed monster is unfit to lead, or the original baboon must resign, how many of you think that those are fiction, that I made those up? How many of you, how many of you think that those are fact, that those are real headlines from 1862? You started with the trickiest one. Those are actually fact. Rhody was doing some research for the book and she discovered that the newspapers were so mean to President Lincoln, they were calling him the mole-eyed monster and the original baboon. And we thought, you know what? If the newspapers were being so mean, maybe he would feel bad and maybe he would want to quit. Thank you for starting us with the hardest one. That one was really hard. All right, I'm gonna ask you a question. Does anybody remember who invented the Secret Service? Do you remember? President Lincoln. President Lincoln himself. Good job. And what street is the White House? Oh. Pennsylvania, Pennsylvania Avenue. Avenue. Good. Who can give me something that's fiction from this part of the story? Um, I don't think this is actually fiction, but I'm guessing that there is a rose garden in the White House. There is a rose garden. Do you remember Woodrow Wilson's wife? What's her name? Rose Garden. <laughs> Woodrow Wilson's wife, Ellen, planted the rose garden. Good job. You guys did a really good job. Does anybody remember who built the Oval Office? This one's going to be the hardest one. Oh, you remember? Is it John? No, oh. you're right here. Who is it? Oh. President Taft built the Oval Office. So there is a lot of fact and a lot of fiction mixed up in these books. What about time travel? Is that fact or fiction? What is it? Fiction. Has anybody here ever time traveled before? Yeah. Yeah. Then yeah. yeah. it would be fact, wouldn't it? At least for now, time travel is fiction. So you guys found a lot of fiction in the story, and you guys found a lot of fact in the story. And you were amazing fact and fiction detectives, and I so appreciate you playing the game with me. And I want to thank you again for letting me come to your school. You guys can give yourselves a big round of applause because you're really good.